yeah, the next 80 minutes, maybe all, but not all, about nanotechnology. So, how small is nano, you know? So, between this and this, your fingernail has grown one nanometer. Your hair has grown one nanometer. I will try, okay. So, your, your, well, your, your fingernail has grown now several nanometers during this first minute. But, but think about it, so if you have the ratio between Earth, it's a soccer ball or a buggy ball, it's the same. So, nano is extremely small in that sense. And nano is big in the Netherlands. We have a lot of companies who work on nanotechnology. This is from ASML, this is a machine shop who makes machines to design chips to make nanotechnology feasible. And if we look into more to nanotechnology, that's our life exists on nanotechnology, on nano sizes. A blood cell, for example, is huge. It's 10 micrometers. A virus, well, it's about 100 nanometer. It comes a little bit in that direction. And DNA is, diameter of DNA is around about 1 to 2 nanometers. So that is in the order of the nanometer. And beforehand, I said, okay, if you look into electronics, and nanoelectronics is the same size. And that is the, for me, exciting word of nanotechnology that what we can make is almost the same dimensions as life exists, the building blocks of life. And that makes nanotechnology nowadays a very interesting subject. But how can we see nano? It's not by a microscope, an optical microscope, it's impossible. Well, you can see blood cells, say that's 10 micrometer, maybe 1 micrometer. But the real nanometer is different. So these are atoms. How you can see atoms? Well, we have to do with this. This is Roy and Binnig, they're from IBM. They had a brilliant idea to see atoms. And, and if you understand, it's very simple. So look, let's assume four atoms. And we all know that the atoms are electrons. So you have a tip. And the tip, the last, is an atom too. So if the electrons overlap, there's a current. And now you can move. Here's a current, here not. Here is, here not, here is. And, and if we put that in a computer, we see the atoms as we see here. This is a very relatively simple method to see on a nanoscale. And some people make brilliant ideas, like also an IBM, like that, who puts it, okay, if you can see an atom, I can pick an atom, I can put them everywhere. So he wrote IBM with seen on atoms. In that sense. It's a very famous picture. And you can say, okay, what can you do with that? Now assume our CD ROM. A CD ROM is a zero and a, and a, and a one. And the distance between is round about, say, a few 10 micrometers or so. So if you put the CD ROM on an optical microscope, you can see the holes, this is the ones and the zeros. If you do it with atoms on a nanoscale, you can put one million CDs on the CD made with nanotechnology. One million. So a huge thing with data storage you can achieve with nanotechnology. But you can do more. If you can see atoms, maybe we can see this building box of life. Here is a fiber. So it's something Dana-like material on an AFM, on an atomic force microscope. And you can see the details. You can see very much inside. And you can also look if you see some disease or not. But the next picture is, is something of a Parkinson patient. And you see differences. You see a straight cable, cable of a few nanometers. Well, that's a good guess. But you also see a wiggling, but that means there's a kind of disease. So what people thought, we do the same trick as Don Eichler did. Just you check a small part you have here, say two nanometers in diameter, and you can measure it. How? If you put it in a beaker or so, you'll never find that. So the only way to measure these distances on the nanoscale makes the apparatus so as small as possible. And that's what we call the lab on the chip. In a lab on the chip, we make channels, we make a whole kind of laboratory on the chip platform. So channels could be one micrometer or maybe 100 nanometer, even 10 nanometers. So a droplet or a thousand of a droplet blood is enough to measure the content of your blood. In here, it's used to, to measure the lithium content of the patient who is manic depressive, who is using lithium. So the whole thing fits in a needle or so. And it measures your blood, the content of your lithium. And not only lithium, you can also do it with magnesium or calcium whatsoever. So we bring in the complete laboratory on a scale, downsized 
in a few millimeter or tens of millimeter. And that makes it a very fruitful way of looking to different behavior, different materials. But I told you we need only one thousandth of a droplet. So the fact that if you are, are measuring that your, your blood, it's, it's, it's not the blood you need, only the, the bleeding of your skin is enough, the blood is enough to measure. Here you can see 36 needles made with this market technology. And it measures on the 36 way the content of your blood. And you can see that the hole itself, remember, you can see it is 20 micrometer. Why is it so big? Because the red blood cells have to go through. But inside the needle is a complete laboratory. So if you put your finger on top of it, you will measure the content of your blood immediately. So if I shake hands to you, I know your blood. If I shake hands to you, maybe I know your DNA. Maybe not now, <laughs> but it's really new, very, very few. In the future, it will be possible to do so. So bringing our DNA, indeed, if nanotechnology and DNA are the same sizes, what you can do with that? Now, think about pillars. Make it kind of these are pillars, run about nano, one hundred nanometer. The size in between is a few nanometers. So every droplet of DNA, and DNA is positively charged, so it will move from one side to the other. So what you see here are DNA, and the pillars are not really just ordinary pillars; they can measure. They are sensors, so they measure DNA directly, not after two, three or four days or so, okay? within a second or maybe in a minute, you can measure the DNA. So you can see what kind of DNA is inside. And you can use this kind of, of ways, this kind of measurement techniques to go deep, because we can make this technology as small as possible. And one of the things you can do is put it in a pill. Here you can see others from the parents group that we know that who made this kind of thing. So you can measure DNA. We know that it's contracting. If you make a nanowire yourself, the nanowire has the same size and the same dimensions of the DNA. You can put electronics inside, you can put a complete laboratory. So if you see in here, here is the pill on the design table where you put in, you put in the pill and start to measure it. Well, let's, let's see how it goes. So, this should take the pill, comes into the sonic, it opens and goes to the car. By the way, there's a camera on board, so he makes pictures of your body. Well, if it's the car, it will take some liquid, and in the liquid you will see that there is this DNA, for example, colon cancer, that you will detect. We put this with a kind of red bullets onto the DNA. So it's collecting in a minute or so some DNA with the nanopillars. It's concentrating, so all the DNA you want to measure is concentrated in the, in the pillars over there. And after a few minutes we have enough selected. And then this is short pills. We put on these nanopillars and they go on the nanowires. They attract. They functionalize. So atoms or the molecule we want to detect the DNA clicks to the nanowires changes the resistance of this nanowire, give a signal to the electronics and nanoelectronics in the pill, give a signal outside the pill towards your iPhone, and give your doctor a message that something is be, being detected in your car. And attached to this, of course, are the pictures that's been made. Is it science fiction? No, it isn't. It's already there. We can make all this separate steps. What is the big challenge? It must have cost 1,000 euro, not 100, but hopefully only five or two. So everyone can use it, not only healthy people, but also some other countries as well. And another point is that, well, the pill, it disappeared, it goes into the environment, so it has to be solved in the environment as well. So these are two challenges, but we were this kind of early diagnostic of cancer is feasible. That also in relation to, if you can detect cancer, can you also, well, do something about it. So the drug delivery, intelligent medicine, look on pills, look on nanostructures like here. Inside such a virus, artificial virus, you can put some medicine. It's detecting, it goes into your body, 
it's adapting to a cancer or a tumor, and the drug is delivered in there. Another part, if we can make this part as well, that's a drug. It's, it's, it's not that easy to get a market for that because it takes some time to, to get this drug really working. But if you have this, these particles, and you can make also have another function, like here, here I make a material, artificially. I put some atoms together, it's a quantum dot. It means that it's not a normal material. It has energy inside. It shines light. So if we make this kind of dots and we put it in a liquid, we can see different colors depending on the size of this quantum nanodot. Well, if it functionalize it the same way, if you do it with drug delivery, and you put it in a kind of the body over that there, here's the mouse, then it goes onto the cancer, onto the tumor, and you can see where the tumor is. So here you put it in here, and here you can see the picture of it. You can imagine you take the tumor away, you wait, and you will see after some time if there still is some left or not. This is visible by the doctor to see where the, where the tumor is and to get rid of it. And that's all very close, because this is a kind of imaging technique that now can be developed and that makes nanotechnology possible. And talking about these new materials, talking about why well, I said, oh yeah, the pill, there's a camera and a pill. Well, because of this, we can make new materials. We can make materials that are so sensitive, for example, on acoustic waves, that we really can make pictures. This is a fetus, this is real-time imaging, now made by Philips Medical Systems. But we can make this camera as small as a needle. We can bring this camera inside your blood vessel. We can transport the camera through your body and make pictures for the inside of your heart. Well, this is possible because we, we make artificial material. With nanotechnology, we can build with the atoms. And I showed you in the previous picture that we can put atoms together. And I make my choice, that's why I can make the quantum dots. But you can also make the new materials. Materials that doesn't exist. Materials that we make with building blocks. It's like Lego, but on an atomic scale. An example. We all know glass. Glass is stickstone. So transparent is glass. We know copper. Copper. It's a very good conductor. It's not transparent. What if I using different atoms joined together and get a material that is as transparent as glass, even more, and as good conducting as copper, even better? These are materials you can use for solar cells, for touch screens, etc. And it's possible. It's not material that's made by nature, but you have to make it artificially. Well, we have some tricks to do so, and here you can see an animation of that. How we do, we want to have atoms. So I use a laser, hit the material, and then atoms comes off this material, a cloud of atoms condensed, and then the next material, the next cloud of atoms condensed, etc. So this building, this Lego, I do with a laser. I have to admit that the equipment you do is, is, is very expensive. That looks, this is another example of what you can do with that. Here you can see a picture of uh, the functional nanomaterial. So it's a kind of animation. I said, does it work with, OK, I can explain. So we now we make material that if you bend the material, there will be a kind of voltage or current coming out. So I explained that that the, the person who saw the first atoms well, was looking to the atoms, he, he was already there and then moved the atoms, so with the movement of this cantilever, as we call that we can see on an atom scale. But that's this cantilever, we can also make these functional materials. So if we functionalize such a cantilever, we can detect particles, nanoparticles, viruses. So this is a kind of artificial nose we can make with this artificial materials. A new breakthrough, I believe, in nanotechnology and medical care. Well, this is your say with the equipment, and I have to admit, nanotechnology is a technology where you need a lot of equipment. You need equipment instead of a clean room, a clean environment. These particles of my body are huge compared to all the things you want to make with nanotechnology. So there is an infrastructure, and luckily in Holland, you have large infrastructures 
for working with nanotechnology. And that means that nanotechnology really now comes across to, to the application. And I told you the first, nanotechnology will change, will change our world, and in a different way. It means that the computer will a million times faster than the computers will work now. The security will be different. Your credit card number, your four digits, I have them in a tenth of a second, that's how I get the money to make such a <laughs> equipment, but okay, so beware if you go outside. But, the, but, that's it. And, but the, all the healthcare will be different. You will have the possibilities to go at home and testing your blood instead of going to the, to the hospital. But also safety reasons is different. What does nanoparticles do when they come in the environment? What will nanoparticles do when they enter your cells? So there is a, a number of things that can happen, that will happen in the near future, that you have to research and you have to study with that. But for sure, and that's something to, to show you later, it really, nanotechnology, will change our worlds. Thank you for your attention.